Okay, I'm continuing my series on Atwood machine problems, and I've actually already started this one. I've already actually solved this one in the previous video, but I'm going to do it again. So the idea here is an Atwood machine with a pulley that's not massless, and I want to solve this problem. Okay, so I've already, I've already, I've already started. I scratched out and starting over. Let me just show you a quick review of what I've done so far in my Atwood machine problem. I made a little map here. So this is your Atwood machine with just no mass on the pulley. So it's just two masses hanging over the, the pulley with a string. Here is a half Atwood machine where one of the masses is on a frictionless table. This is a half Atwood inclined machine. Wait, half half Atwood, inclined half Atwood. So it's the same thing, but the, the table's not flat. This is the same half Atwood, but I solved for the final velocity. Here's half Atwood with friction. So you can see the little squiggly line there. That means friction. Here's a half a inclined half Atwood machine with friction. And then I did uh, the heavy pulley Atwood machine that I'm doing right now, but I did this one using work energy. Now I'm going to use uh, other ideas. And so we can compare the answer though. So here's my problem. I have mass M2, mass M1 hanging over a pulley with mass. Okay. Um, so the first thing to think about is if this mass moves down a little bit, a centimeter, that mass has to move up a centimeter. So that means that the uh, velocity of these two masses has to be the same magnitude. And if the velocities are the same magnitude over time, the accelerations have to be the same. So the acceleration, the magnitude of this acceleration has to be equal to the magnitude of that acceleration. In, the another, in other problems with a massless pulley, the other thing was that the tension on these two masses was the same. And that's no longer true. Okay, Because there is a frictional interaction between the string and the pulley, then the, the tension on one side does not have to be the tension on the other side. And in fact, a difference in tension is what makes that pulley rotate. Uh, if the pulley is massless, you don't need any force to get it to rotate, which is weird, but it's massless pulley, so that's weird as it is. Okay, so let's look at some important ideas about rotating objects that we're going to use. So the first is this idea of torque. Uh, so the torque is defined in one dimension, which we can do in this case because we're not rotating. It's really the uh, radius from the point of torque to the force R cross F. Okay, but we don't need to use that. We can use this easier formula. Torque is RF sine theta, where theta is the angle between the torque arm and the force. And what do torques do to an object? They cause them to change rotational motion. That's alpha, the angular acceleration. I is the moment of inertia. It's like the rotational mass. It's what resists, what the what property of the object resists changes in rotation, just like mass resists changes in motion. So if this is a disk rotated about the center, then the moment of inertia of a disk was one half m3 r q squared, where I'm using this as m2, m1, and the mass of the disk is m3 with the radius r. Now one other thing is if the string is, ro is moving without slipping on the disk, then the string is going to accelerate just like the masses. And the magnitude of the linear acceleration of the string is going to be related to the angular acceleration of the wheel, alpha equals A over R. This is the same as true for a rolling wheel that's accelerating. The angular acceleration is related to the linear acceleration with this expression right there. Okay, so now we're ready to get started. Uh, the first thing to do is to uh, consider the forces on these two masses. Um, so the tensions don't have to be the same. The example I like to use is imagine this is a, a super massive pulley and I pull down on it so it barely accelerates and the, the acceleration is zero. Then, then I'm pulling down. This, this tension would have to be uh, higher than the mass right here, okay? Higher than the weight. Um, but on this side, this one doesn't accelerate and I'm not pulling on it. So this tension would be equal to this weight approximately. So, but the thing is these two tensions don't have to be the same. So if I look at mass two, I have two forces, T2 pulling up, M2G pulling down, and mass one, I have T1 pulling up and M1G pulling down. Um, so let's start with that. I can write down my two Newton second law equations. Okay, so for mass one, I have F net Y equals 
T1 minus M1G equals negative M1A. So I'm assuming that this is accelerating down this way and that one accelerates up. So that one, that's negative. For the other mass, I get T2 minus M2G equals M2A. Now in my previous solutions with a massless pulley, uh, I had two equations, two unknowns. I didn't know T and I didn't know A. But now I have two T's that I don't know. So I'm going to look over here and we need to calculate the torque, the net torque on this disk. So uh, clockwise torques are going to be negative. So this torque, right, this tension is going to exert a torque and it's going to be negative T1 times R times the sine of the angle between those two, but that's 90 degrees. So that's the torque due to this one. And the torque due to this one's going to be counterclockwise, so it's going to be positive T2 R times the sine of 90 also. And that's going to be equal to uh, I times alpha. And if I use uh, the moment of inertia, I get uh, negative T1 R plus T2 R equals 1 half M3 R squared. That's the moment of inertia. And then I get A over R for the angular velocity, angular acceleration. And because I want to get this in terms of the other variable A, that's why I did that. And this R cancels with that. Uh, so now I can also divide both sides of the equation by R. And the R goes away. No R's. Which is what I had before. So now I get T2 minus T1 equals M3 over 2A. Let's solve this for T2. So T2 equals T1 plus M3 over 2A. And now I'm going to substitute that in over here. And so I'll rewrite this equation. I get T1 plus M3A over 2. Now I have minus M2G equals M2A. Now I'm going to solve this one for T1 and I get T1 equals M1G minus M1A. Now I can plug that in over here and I get M1G minus M1A plus M3A over 2 minus M2G equals M2A. I want to get all the A's on one side. Uh, so that's this one and this one. I'll subtract those from the, both sides. So I get M1G plus minus M2G equals M2A plus M1A minus M3 over 2A. Now I can factor out the A and I get A times M2 plus M1 minus M3 over 2. Uh, now I can divide both sides by this and I get A equals, uh, I can factor out a G. Do I want to do that? Let's see, did I do it before? Where's my previous answer? I did, okay. So I'm going to write this as uh, M1 minus M2 G divided by M1 plus M2 minus M3 over 2. And I'm pretty sure I got a different answer. Okay, so one of these is wrong. The last time I did it with work energy, I got a plus, and now I have a minus. But they're very, very similar. Uh, let's think for a second. Should, I think it should be plus. Because the effect of having a mass should decrease acceleration. So, let's see. M3 over 2. Subtracted that. Let's see. M3. Hmm. Okay, with, I'm, I'm happy mostly, okay? 
Um, because even if I let the mass go to zero, I get the expression for a massless pulley. I'm pretty sure it should be plus, but I just don't see where I made my mistake. So this is minus, where'd that come from? That came from this moving to the other side. So why is that plus, where this M3 come from? It was over here. And where did that come from? T2. T2 plus. Where did that come from? Ah, which way is this accelerating? I think this should be negative. That's why. Because uh, it's rotating in the, in the negative direction, right? Negative angular acceleration. That's why. That should be negative. So this is negative. So this is negative. So this is negative. So this is positive. Okay, I think that's it. I fix it. And if I didn't, I at least gave it a great try. Okay, so we're going to do some more uh, uh, Atwood machine physics problems. I'm going to keep going. I got a few more ideas I'm going to do. I can't stop now. I'm just trying to do everything. And there you go.